Um, they want us to graph it on paper and then answer the following part. So let's try to graph this function. Well, notice that when we studied um, transformations, we have just plane of x squared. Notice there's no x hanging out anywhere. Minus 3. This is in our vertex form. Okay, This is basically the parabola x squared moved down 3 units. Um, our vertex, Okay, so this is actually in the correct form. Let me just add a little portion there for our h and our k. Okay, this is in standard form. So our vertex would be at 0, negative 3. Okay, you can always just plug points into graph parabolas also. The only problem is you have to make sure you get the vertex in there somewhere. So you want to know where the vertex is. Okay, let's try and find our x intercepts. Again, x intercepts are where f of x equals 0. So to find the x intercepts, or the zeros of our function, what we're going to do is put 0 equals x squared minus 3 and solve for x. Right, add 3 to both sides. We get 3 is equal to x squared. How do we solve and get rid of an x squared? We take the square root of both sides. And always, always, if you do that yourself, put plus or minus in front. So our x values are plus or minus the square root of 3, which means our x-intercepts are at the square root of 3, 0, and the negative square root of 3, 0. Okay? I, to put them on the graph, I would just go ahead and use my calculator to find out what the decimal number is there but they're going to want exact answers on your assignment. So leave the root there for your answer. And it's at about 1.7 and negative 1.7. Okay, so here is a sketch of my graph. The y-intercept, you put 0 in for x and find your y. Well, we can see on the graph that our, our y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. But if you didn't see that, if you put 0 in for your x, 0 squared is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. So our y intercept is at 0, negative 3. Find the domain. Um, quadratic functions have no fractions, no radicals. So our domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The range, on the other hand, we have to take a look. This opens upward from negative 3 up from there. Okay. So our range starts at negative 3, including that number, so we put our little square brackets, and goes up to infinity for our y values. List the intervals where the function is decreasing. Function decreasing means that it's going downward as we move to the right. Where is our, our parabola going downward? Um, this section here is going downward as we move to the right the downhill slope, that's a decreasing. And where is that happening? Well, it's happening from negative infinity until we get to zero. And when they ask for these intervals of decreasing and increasing, remember it's the x values they're asking about. What x values is that happening for? Not the y values. What's the intervals where it's increasing? Well, where is, is it increasing? It appears it's increasing starting at zero and going from there to infinity. What is the vertex? We found our vertex. So it was at 0, negative 3. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? We can see that that's the low point on our graph. Again, another way to tell that is to look in front of x squared. It's positive, so it opens up and has a minimum value at its bottom. What is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is always x equals the x coordinate of your vertex, which in this case was 0. It's the vertical line that goes down the center of the parabola. Okay, so there you go. There is one example. <clears throat> Here is a second example. Let's look at what form it's written in. And we, if we look at it, we notice that we have the parentheses with the squared, and we don't have any other x's hanging out anywhere else. So this is in standard form. And remember, the standard form, we can just go ahead and write down the vertex. So that's what I'm going to do down here. I'm going to answer 
what's the vertex of the curve. For the x part, remember to change the sign because it's x minus h. So my vertex would be negative 3 and positive 4, that number on the end. So if I wanted to take a look at my graph, I could. It's at negative 3 and up 4. Okay. What other things do they want to know? They want to know the x-intercept. If they ask for the zeros, those are also the x's that make f of x equal 0. So for x-intercepts and for zeros, should they ask for those, you write down your function and you set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So looking at this one, we want to isolate the parentheses portion there. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I get negative 4 equals negative 2 times x plus 3 squared. I still need to isolate that. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And I get 2 is equal to x plus 3 squared. How do I get rid of a square? I take the square root of both sides. And I'm going to put a plus or minus here because I took the square root myself. So I get that removes my squared, and I get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 2. Still have to get x by itself. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, that will do it for me. So my zeros are negative 3. Sorry about that. My zeros are negative 3 plus the square root of 2 and negative 3 minus the square root of 2. That means my x-intercepts are negative 3 plus root 2, 0, and negative 3 minus root 2, 0, kind of messy. If you want to place those numbers on the graph, you would just take out your calculator um, and plug that in, negative 3 plus the square root of 2, okay? But again, the reason we don't do that all the time is because we like to have exact answers that we could use later. And I'm getting about negative 1.6, about here, and... negative 4.4. Okay, so that's approximately what our parabola looks like. Pretty ugly for right now. Let's find our y-intercepts. To find the y-intercepts, you put 0 in for x and find out what y would be. So we take our function, we replace the x with a 0, and we evaluate. 0 plus 3 would be 3. Do order of operations. You square first. 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. And then we add 4. So our y-intercept is when, x, when y would be negative 14. So x is 0. y is negative 14. Now let's find our domain. Again, with quadratics, it's typically all real numbers. The range, we look at our graph and say what y values do we have. Well, it looks like from the vertex, it opens down. The vertex is at the point negative 3, 4. Okay, so 4 is as high as our y values get. So the range is from negative infinity to 4 including 4. List the intervals for decreasing. Decreasing is where the function is going downward as we travel to the right, which would be the right-hand side of our graph there. And that starts for our x values at negative 3 and goes to infinity. Where is it increasing or where is it going upward as we travel to the right? That goes from negative infinity to our negative 3. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? Well, we could have seen from the beginning 
that it would open downward because of that negative 2. So it would have a maximum point. And as we look at that graph, we can see the maximum point is our vertex. What is the axis of symmetry? It's always x equals the x-coordinate of our vertex. And our vertex is at negative 3, 4. So it would be the line x equals negative 3.